Wow. That's the symbol I used for dragon on my tights, which is actually a Sikh symbol, I learned. Thank you to everyone who pointed that out to me. Pretty cool. Today I'm testing whether Pokemon Go Plus tracks distance better than just having the game alone. But first, we need to eat Filipino food. Hi, hello. If you know anything about Filipino food, you know it's pretty much impossible not to eat meat when you're eating it. So this will probably be my meat quota for the entire week. Alright, thank you. Not bad. Very heavy. Alright, now we're gonna go test this out. We're at Mile Square Regional Park, which is supposedly an Oddish nest. I don't see any on the sightings right now, but that's okay, because Oddish is secondary to our main goal today. Today, we want to test whether Pokemon Go Plus tracks distance better than the app alone. So what we're gonna do is walk together, I'll have Go Plus connected, Cassie will just be using the app alone, and we're gonna compare our distance as we walk around the park. We're starting our walk across the street from the park because there's a straight sidewalk on this side. So the first thing we're gonna test is which one's more accurate in a straight line, because we know the way the game tracks distance is by checking your location every minute or so, and it draws a straight line between point A and point B to see how far you've traveled. We're gonna use our buddy Pokemon as a measure of our distance. So right now I'm at 14.2 kilometers on my drowsy. Cassie's at 4.1 kilometers with her Snorlax. So we'll do the math at the end of our walk and see how far each of us have traveled. I'm also gonna start some eggs right now because if we're walking, I might as well. I have quite a few five kilometer eggs. Maybe I can hatch them by the end of the day. And aside from that, I'm also gonna use this run tracker to track our distance and see how it compares to the actual distance that we're traveling. Start run. There we go. This should keep track of how far we're traveling, at least a little bit more accurately than Pokemon Go does. So we can compare the distance in Pokemon Go to the actual distance we're traveling. So here we go, straight line. This is going to be the end of our straight walk. We've walked half of Mile Square Park, which happens to be about half a mile. Makes perfect sense. Half a mile in kilometers is, according to Google, 0.837 kilometers. So looking at my buddy, I have 14.9 with Drowsy, which means I've been credited for about 0.7 kilometers. And Cassie has... Went back to... I already got a candy. Wait, but why did you total change? It was 4.8. It was 4.8. Cassie's distance actually reset, but it was 4.8. next found a candy. Okay, go back to the thing, so see maybe, if it shows. So maybe it was slush. Or 4.9 or something. Okay, hers says 5 kilometers walked, which actually means she got credited for 0.9, which is weird. Um, when we first stopped, it said 4.8. I pace a lot. Does that count? So far, results inconclusive. They're either getting the same amount of distance or Cassie got slightly more for whatever reason. Uh, but now we're gonna head across the street into the park where there's some more curvy walking trails and we'll see which one's more accurate as we walk through that mess in there. Oddish of the day. Seems like they're probably going to be closer to the lake over here. Yes, I did. Got it. We both got it. 105 Oddish candies. I'm actually way closer to Vile Plume than I thought. Maybe. Maybe by the end of the day. I doubt it. But I'm getting close. Got 
Oddish, well, I know it's an Oddish because Cassie said so, but you can see that with Go Plus, it's slightly out of range. There it is, it just spawned. Oh. So here we go. Oh, error. The Oddish despawned. Buddy, what happened to your foot? Oh. I get it. I get it. He's trying to scratch himself, but there's no foot at the end of his leg. Crazy. We've been sitting here in the car for probably close to 10 minutes now. And the reason we did that is because I want to make sure that the game updates our distance. As you know, it only updates the distance once every four minutes. And I think what happened after the end of our first walk is our games weren't updating at the same time. And we stopped there for five minutes, but it's possible that Cassie's game updated like, a little bit of the extra it distance. Again too. Really? See, that's so weird. We were sitting here for like <laughs> 10 minutes. 10 minutes and her game just updated and added more distance. So anyway, barring any sort of issues like that, here's what we come up with. Much curvier than the first. The first time we just walked straight. This one we did a little squiggly and a loop around the lake and it came out to 1.2 miles. Now Google says 1.2 miles is 1.93 kilometers. So let's see how much we actually got credit for. I started this walk at 14.8 kilometers on my drowsy. I'm now at 16.5, which is a total of 1.7 kilometers that I got credit for. So that's pretty close to the 1.9 that we actually walked. Cassie has 6.6 .6 with her Snorlax. She started this walk at 5.0, so she got credit for 1.6 kilometers. And that's actually not a huge difference. So it seems like Pokemon Go Plus isn't really that much more accurate at tracking distance than the app alone. It certainly feels that way, and one of the teardowns show that there might be a pedometer inside Go Plus. It's possible that when you're taking curvy walks, it's tracking your steps and somehow kind of converting that into distance. It's a nice hair clip, too. All right, we'll make one. We'll make a Go Plus hair clip, <laughs> Boop. if anyone's Snow interested. Likes. Sorry. Overall, doesn't seem to be that much more accurate. <laughs> I'm not satisfied with the results from earlier. There were just too many variables that could have affected the outcome. So I'm out here, it's nighttime, but I wanna try this experiment again and I wanna control for those variables. When Cassie and I were walking together, we didn't walk the exact same path and you know, I stopped to put the camera down and go back to pick it up. So we didn't walk the exact same distance. So what I'm gonna do now is try to do this again, but have two phones on me so that they move the exact same distance, the exact same path, and uh, we'll see what happens. So here are my two phones. I've been sitting here for quite a while, so I know the distance is updated. And what I'm gonna do is start two eggs, one on each. With eggs, I'll be able to track the distance a little bit more accurately. I'll get that one extra decimal place. And what I'm gonna do is now just walk down the street straight, no nonsense, no putting the camera down, no stopping, no turning around to pick it back up. I'm just gonna walk straight with both of these phones on my person and we'll see um, if the distance is different at the end. I have Go Plus connected to one phone. The other one is gonna be relying just on the app and we'll see what happens at the end of the walk. So here we go. This is the beginning of the straight test. This will be the end of my straight walk, and I'm going to wait here until the distance updates on both phones. I'm out of range. It's right across the street. Anyway, I'm going to wait here for a few minutes until the distance updates on both phones, and we'll see what happens. Both phones just updated, and check it out. We're at 0 0.9 on the phone with Go Plus connected, and 0 0.92 on the phone with no Go Plus. Now, that might be attributable to the fact that this phone's GPS is a little off, so there might have been a little bit of drift, but for the most part, they're about the same distance, no significant difference. So what I'm gonna do now is head back, back down the same path, we should get 0.9 again, 
and by that time all these 5k eggs are going to hatch on my account. So we'll see those eggs hatch and then I'm going to do kind of a squiggly path through the park and see if there's any difference then. Here we go. Alright, I'm back at the starting point and these eggs are hatching and while these hatch that should be enough time for uh, the distance to update on both phones. I love this, that I can just... So efficient. Spinning Pokestops, hatching eggs at the same time. Horsey. If this has good IVs, I should be able to evolve this on some... Oh, not quite. Four more candies. Um, dang. Could be 80. Paris, another one. Might as well appraise that too. Yep. That's a good one. Bell Sprout. How close am I? 76. Meowth. Should really count. I guess it doesn't matter. It's over when it's over. Another Bell Sprout. Okay, so that's why I had 76 candies. This one's not above 80 either. It's alright, I think I have another one that's already ready to evolve. Or uh, worthy of evolving. Shelter. 46 candies on this too. And not above 80 either. Rhyhorn. I wouldn't mind evolving another Rhyhorn. Not above 80 either. Slowpoke. Yeah. What's this one? That looks good. Yep. No way. Was that what I thought it was? HP, attack, defense. Perfect IV slowpoke. Alright, well that makes up for all those poor IVs. Perfect IV slowpoke. Now, let's see how that other egg's doing. 1.6. And let's check the other phone. There they are. 1.61 with the Go Plus, 1.59 without. So again, in a straight line, exactly the same distance, basically. Not exactly. So now I'm gonna head through the park. I'll spin the Pokestops in there. It's kind of a squiggly path, let's see. Kind of a squiggly path through the park. I'll just follow the Pokestops. Definitely won't be a straight line. And then back through this neighborhood to Cassie's house and we'll see where the eggs end up when I get there. All right, this will be the end of my walk. I've been sitting here training up this gym for a little while, so that should have been enough time for both phones to update the distance on the eggs. Let's see how they look. 3.33 on the phone with Go Plus connected, 3.02 on the phone with no Go Plus. So there is actually a little bit of a difference here on the squiggly, curvy, not straight walk, and that kind of falls in line with what we saw earlier today, where on the way back through the park, my phone registered a little bit more distance than Cassie's. Again, this phone does have some GPS issues, so that might have been a factor, but GPS drift doesn't usually reduce the distance that you've traveled. If anything, it would have added extra distance. I don't want to assume too much, but it does seem like on curvier walks, Go Plus adds a little bit more accuracy to distance tracking. We know the way the game calculates distance right now is that it checks your location periodically. So let's say at 12 o'clock you're at point A, at 12.01 you're at point B, and it just draws a straight line to see how far apart those two points are, and that's the distance that it gives you. Now with Go Plus, if it does have a pedometer in it like one of the teardowns suggested, you might still get credit for that distance because even though the server checks and sees that at 12 o'clock you were here and 12.01 you were here, Go Plus knows that you've taken enough steps to travel from here to here and back before the server checks your distance. So again, it's possible that Go Plus tracks distance a little bit more accurately than the app alone, but because my experiment wasn't perfectly designed, this phone does have some GPS issues, I'm not confident enough to say for sure. If anyone with Go Plus has noticed that their distance seems to be a little bit more accurate, if you've been out with a friend and you notice that you get credit for more distance than they do, go ahead and leave a comment, let me know what your experience has been. But for now, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode, and I'll see you tomorrow. As I scroll down my list, you can see that I have quite a few different symbols, and I use a different symbol for every type. There are some Pokemon that don't have symbols, and that means they don't have moves that I think are worth using in a gym. So I don't need to know the types because I'm not going to be using them.